Hello and welcome to The Big Fight, where for some time now we've been sounding warning signals about the state of the economy. And right now, I think it would be fair to say that everyone is almost equally unhappy. A lot of the people out there on the road streets are really unhappy. Oil prices, high petrol price up very sharply, they're not happy. Foreign investors, not happy either for a range of uh, other reasons. Where exactly are we headed? What are we doing to the economy? And if it is sliding, who is to blame? Is it entirely the Greeks who should be blamed for everything that's going wrong out here? Or should the government also take its share of the blame? Those are some of the questions we are going to be discussing. And uh, joining us right here in the studio, Mr. Govind Rao, who's a member of the Economic Advisory Council to the Prime Minister. So we can perhaps start by putting some of the blame on you, sir, and on everybody else in the Advisory Council. Naresh Gujral, great to have you with us. MP Rajya Sabha from the Akali Dal. Mr. Hanan Mola, a member of the Central, Central Secretariat of the CPIM, who is no doubt going to argue that UPA, one, did a much better job when they were actually uh, holding the whip hand. Uh, James uh, Fanatela Khan, correspondent of Financial Times, was with us a short while back when we were first started to sound these warning bells, and I suspect the situation may well have uh, worsened since then. We're also being joined by Dr. Subramaniam Swami, uh, President of the Janta Party, uh, and uh, finally, but last but not least, Sanjay Nirupam, Lok Sabha MP from the Congress Party, and we are going to be joined in just a minute or two by Vikram Singh Mehta, former chairman of the Shell Group of Companies. Um, let me start with you, Mr. Rao. Prices going up, rupee in a free fall, markets not knowing what to do, a sense of that, a sense that there is no direction at all. Foreign investors more unhappy than I ever recall seeing them in the last 15 to 20 years. What's going wrong? Well, the um, economy is not in a good shape at all. Is it a situation where we cannot retrieve? Certainly, we can retrieve the situation. It's not that uh, it, this thing. Because uh, you should realize that much of the growth story in this country is based on the domestic savings. And there hasn't been a great deal. Of, there has been a reduction in the domestic savings. There hasn't been a great deal of uh, problem. But then this twin, twin deficit problem is going to be a major issue. It's not just the Greek tragedy that we are facing. In addition to the Greek tragedy, we have created a lot of problems for ourselves. Created a lot of problems for ourselves. And actually, I think that's one of the things we should turn our attention to. Nobody can necessarily affect global problems. You know, yes, yeah, absolutely. Europe is bust, going bust. That's fine. what we economists but we call in India have done a lot to ourselves, which perhaps we should really sit and question. Naresh? You know, there is gloom all around. Uh, government is a prisoner of indecision now. No decision making at all. Look at the overall situation, look at the way the rupee is tumbling. The day Mr. Pranam Mukherjee came out with a budget, rupee was 50 rupees. This morning it was 56 rupees. That just goes to show the confidence in the economy. Everywhere you look, people are despondent. And now this price hike of the fuel, this is going to kill the Ahmad. So, Hanan Mona? UPA2 government, in last three years, they failed in all the policy directions. They failed in intervening in the collapse of economy. They fail. They are collapsing, but they are not capable to intervene <laughs> properly. They also fail to legislate economic legislation as they wanted mm. as their reform. And thirdly, they also fail to check corruption, which is also eating the vitals of the national economy. So, because of there is a total policy paralysis, because of the policy paralysis, the country's economy is in doldrum and we do not know. Okay, James, do you simple. agree with any or all of what has been said and then we are going to try and figure out what is contributing to it and what we can do to fix it? The economy is, is, is in trouble, there is no doubt about that. Today, major investment banks have downgraded India's kind of GDP growth outlook to kind of in the 6% area. You know, a year ago, India was forecast to grow at 9%. So w what's gone wrong? And, and I think the interesting thing is to understand how this kind of drop from 9 or 8% to 6% is affecting the common man. And, and it's not just petrol prices, there's much more going on, people who don't have jobs. So this is going to have massive impact on the economy. And, and, and going forward, I don't see how things are going to improve, to be frank. Sanjay. Is the situation as bad as all of us think it is? The Indian economy is facing a lot of challenges at this point of time. I can't say that we are going through very bad shape. As compared to the world economy, 
our GDP growth rate is far, far better. All over the world, including China, every country's uh, growth is going down, GDP growth is going down. One, second, Indian economy cannot be assessed in any isolation because the whole world is facing a, a sort of uh, financial recession and uh, every uh, our export uh, export sector is uh, severely affected because american market or the european market is badly affected so we are looking for some other market like the asian market or the gulf market yeah sanjay that's only yeah. partially correct there are two problems with what you have just said number one yes india is going better than the rest of the world but that's not necessarily the criteria we should judge ourselves by mm -hmm. the criteria we should judge ourselves by is the level at which india could be growing and should be growing and compared to that, we are doing far worse than we should. And the second point is, yes, the world is facing a sloth. But what we've done out here, what we seem to have done to our own economy is score some self-goals, like going after Vodafone or what good, have you. Good and time. those self-goals are damaging us at a time when we need not have damaged ourselves. Our fundamentals are still very strong. The agriculture growth rate is tremendously high. We have, we have produced a record uh, quantity of uh, food grains this year it's more than uh, more than more than 250 million ton one second agriculture uh, industrial growth rate is fantastic uh, similarly the service sector is on on on, uh, uh, on high so these three sectors are doing very well yes rupees devaluation is a is a cause of concern but only our currency is devalued it is not like that all the asian markets currencies are going down only dollar is strong, otherwise every market, every currency is uh, affected at this point of time. But yes, actually, it's almost not possible for I... every currency to go down no, no, simultaneously. No, one issue is, he, I've heard that industrial growth is great. It contracted in March. It's been low. I mean, industrial growth is not great at all. Minus three and a half percent. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I do, I, or we live on yeah, the same yeah. planet, or we're talking, and, and agriculture is growing at two to three percent. How can that be great? And the, the importance that it has in the economy has decreased. So let's be realistic, at least when we're talking about the facts. Industrial growth is down 3.5%. Can't be can great. I'm sorry. We had a bumper crop this time. We don't have storage sp space. Why can't we plan in advance? We've been, these warning bells have been there for a long time. Today, in Punjab, I can tell you, more than 10 million tons is lying in the open. What is in the storage also? Uh, there are ancient storage spaces. Mr. Rao, why can't you we know, plan for these things? No, no, this is the problem that we have created historically. Let me tell you. If you have minimum support prices as minimum support prices and not these procured prime men prices being much more than the market prices and if year after year you, you know, increase the prices 15%, 20%, there will be a huge procurement that will take place and you don't have the, the infrastructure. Do you have the NDTV Profit app? All the markets, all the news and your own homemade, ready-made portfolio available there for you. We will right now answer what you should sell, what you should buy when markets are down. Download at ndtvprofit.com slash apps. Get the best app from the channel you trust.